Hello Canada. How many of you have heard of Bridget Belton? She was actually the starter of the convoy. She was the one that reached out to TikTok users. She was she was on TikTok and she put out to other TikTok users the hashtag convoy 2022 in other people's TikToks until somebody responded and Chris Barber was the one that responded and, and then it went from there of course she's never really mentioned in in most of the things and I was kind of surprised to hear about her but anyway she was the one that first inspired the idea she was driven to the limits of trying to do cross-border trucking she is a trucker her and her husband and they bought a truck in 2014 I believe and so okay so she she was just completely messed up by the mandates and the mask mandates especially even at the beginning and so she's just she's at her wits end anyway she's here testifying and we've got um, the council for the uh, Jeffrey Leon is co-lead counsel for the commission and uh, she she gets a little tight with him and uh, we'll see how that goes this is Canada do you want to know what it feels like to be this is Canada attacked do you want to know what threatened it feels like? just cross the Canadian border as a truck driver I just crossed in tonight and uh, an officer sent me into secondary with a threat of the Windsor police coming and uh, <laughs> and um, giving me a fine or whatever they're gonna do to me I don't know um, the last time I was here for a mask mandate issue they threatened to take my truck they threatened to impound my load um, and then I spoke with uh, Windsor Health Department <clears throat> and uh, they gave me, you know, Jessica's number and I was supposed to, um, supposed to uh, deal with her. But see, in Canada, we're no longer free. And um, this may be the night where I... Uh, I go and ask for exile into uh, into the U.S. because um, this is a big country. This isn't what my grandparents came for. Being harassed at the border over a mask. Um, I just uh, I just wish that uh, somebody understood that not all of us can wear it. And what happened to me the night. The reason why I mentally can't deal with being uh, something over my face um, I shouldn't ever have to explain over the last two years people have made my life hell over the last two years people have become rude and ignorant and I'm done I'm done. I don't know what I'm gonna do next, oh, but I'm done. This is ridiculous. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. This is what it's like to be Canadian. People get out, move. So that was her sitting in her truck being accosted by CBSA agents 
harassing her for not wearing a mask when she pulled up at the border crossing. This is before the mandates. This is before the vaccine mandates, whatever. They harassed her for not wearing a mask while she was in her truck alone. But to speak with them at the border crossing, she needed to wear a mask. And she's exempt and she has doctor's letters saying that she's exempt from wearing a mask. But no, they would never deal with her properly. And every time she came across, it was a harassment, harassment, harassment every single time. So she's done. She says she's done, done, done. She actually goes on to say that uh, she sounded like she was just ready to just go kill herself. She's that done. Um right from that night the first impact was noticed as my husband was asking me to stop i actually passed three truck stops not even realizing i had passed them on the 401 eastbound when i finally uh pulled in to the flying j in london it was full there was no parking london police are known for ticketing trucks so i left on my exit from the london truck stop, you get to a dead end and you have to turn right. On that right turn, I did not see a minivan. And I nearly killed the people in that minivan that night. Um, it literally exploded overnight. And it says at the bottom, January 23rd, we slow roll. I think it's it should be every, every. <laughs> province uh, until mandates stop. Yes. So what, what was your plan? Our plan was to slow roll in place, not necessarily block borders. That was never the plan. Um, it was to slow traffic, be a nuisance, but be within our legal rights to protest. I'd been contacted from the Yukon, from Nunavut, uh, from BC through to Newfoundland. Never shifted. It was uh, always for the mandates. Um, I received a message from the Women's uh, Federation of Trucking, and uh, Shelly is a, a friend of my husband's, has been for quite some time. They've done uh, um, cancer convoys together. Okay, I'm trying to edit past some slow spots and the questioner here Jeffrey Lyon he wants to and all of these government people want to point to Bowder's uh, MOU and Pat King and certain people and try and make them out to be insurrectionists so anyway it's not really flying um, and and most of these people have nothing to do with any of that but they keep referring back to that so just as you know she's she's denying that although she worked with Bowder uh, only because of his following and it was always in Pat King it was about the following that they had an exposure on social media that they could gather more people that was really the only connections to any of this stuff we were growing very very fast um, Pat King had a huge media prep, uh, presence, so he claimed uh, his claim is true, and that helped us reach out to more people. Uh, James Bowder also had a huge media presence, uh, which helped us reach even more people. At the time Convoy started, I had less than 1,000 followers. I was new to TikTok. Chris had 
explosive numbers. I think he was in the 160s. Uh, I can't give it an exact number. These gentlemen had the numbers to get going. I had the passion, the drive, and the heart. Uh, prior to even uh, Chris Barber agreeing, I was going forward whether he agreed or not. Uh, I was just lucky that it was him that did agree. And if you understand, from your point of view, the purpose or the goal of the Freedom Convoy? To end the mandate so I could go back to work and every other essential uh, worker could become essential again. I actually believed that the Prime Minister wouldn't run away and he would come and beat with us. I, and he would come and beat with us. I believed that our voices would be heard. I believed that we were validated in our complaint and that after two years, maybe somebody would care. Okay, if you notice there's choppy edits, uh, that's just the way it is. I'm trying to skip through some of uh, Jeffrey's drone on and other drone ons and get to the meat. And here we go. This is a video of hers that she put together. You see in where passes, um, can you just describe what you were experiencing along the way? Canadians finally peaceful, Canadians supporting each other, Canadians finally not separated or segregated in any way. Before you arrived in Ottawa, did you have a plan as to where you were going to go, or was your plan just to follow the directions that you, you received? That would be questions for James Bowles. And what did you do then? I hugged him. Okay. Um, at some point, did you come back into Ottawa? Not that night. I stayed at a relative's home. Mm -hmm. And so you came back on the, the 29th, is that? I went back up to Arm Prior on the 29th, and I led Mike Stack and the rest of the convoy in. I knew the area. It's easier when you have a pilot car that knows the directions and the city streets. We were again told to go through onto the S-Jam However, a portion of the convoy was unknowingly to me then directed by overhead signs to use different streets. Some of us were already on the S jam and others were being directed by overhead signage. Do you know to use what streets? Do you know? I was on the S jam, so I wouldn't know. On Wellington Street. Love, unity, people happy. This had been two years. People had been suppressed. Two years. People were struggling. Two years that our government had told us, shame your family. Do not allow them to come to Christmas. Do not allow them to come at Easter. Do not allow them to come to your home if they are not vaccinated, if they don't wear a mask. 
there was a lot of hate in Canada. And the Toronto Sun supported it, or the Toronto Star, excuse me, supported it. People were evil towards each other. And that is not what I saw in Ottawa. I saw love, I saw unity, I saw Quebec with Alberta, I saw Ontario with Quebec hugging. I saw people happy. It was the best thing that happened to our country in two years. Okay, can we play that video then? That's getting threatened is a little upset this morning, or yesterday he tweeted that he was getting threatened and he's got work to do in Ottawa. Mm. I've heard this rhetoric before, actually. But I'd like to tell you, sir, this is what it's like to be a truck driver crossing into Canada. Because of you and your staff and the mandates, you have threatened me for two years. How does it feel? It doesn't feel so good, does it? I've lost 22 pounds now because of what has happened to me at the border. Who's gonna address the mental health issues that your agents, your CBS agents, they are a direct extension of you, have done to me? Nobody's paying for that. You've tortured me for two years. And you're worried about our peaceful protest? Maybe stop paying Antofia to show up if you don't want to be threatened. It's not our group. Have a good day. And what led you to make that uh, video? One of the ministers complained they were getting harassed and they had work to do in Ottawa. We had been harassed every day for two years. And um, if you can bring up, uh, please, uh, another video, COM 50872. Did you, while you were, uh, we were doing that, while you were um, in Ottawa, did you see, um, you've described the, how you felt about the conduct there, but did you see any conduct that was, you felt was inappropriate or caused you concern? I mean, there were people drinking. Maybe it wasn't in a LCBO licensed establishment but I saw food not being checked by food agencies either. Is that the risk? I guess we all took it and we survived. Okay, can we play that video then? two times where I put uh, envelopes together due to transparency I had requested that we film those that when we got the money we counted it we put it into envelopes and they were distributed uh, th the group over at the Sheridan got a little upset with us as they were handing out $500 and um, and Drew had suggested we hand out 2,000 since 500 is not a large number. Uh, arrested at any time? No, sir. Um, was your bank account frozen? Yes, sir. Uh, or how, how, tell me about that, what happened? I understood the government officials stated that they had notified organizers their bank accounts would be frozen. My husband notified me my bank account and his bank account were, and our business bank account were frozen. And at 10.04 on the 17th is when I received a phone call from a person stating they were from the Royal Bank and that they had frozen my accounts they had a very nasty exchange with me because they had no right to do so. I told them to open the accounts. They told me to call them when I left Ottawa and I said, you need to open my accounts. 
We ended the exchange. I realized other people in the room were also getting that same phone call. Whether it was the same person making the phone call, I do not know, but I do know other people in the room were getting the same phone call. She states later that the phone number that was recorded on her phone from that call, she called that number and it was not RBC. She didn't know exactly who it was that made that call, but it was not connected to an RBC agent. In Ottawa? I just want everybody to know that we weren't Classic. there to disrupt the city residents. We were there to be heard. I had given 32 emails approximately to MPs and MPPs, 32. Not one of them did anything for me. I followed how things are supposed to go. You first go and you complain. You try again, you try again. And when CBSA sent me a reply, pretty much suck it up, buttercup, this is the way it's gonna go and you're about to lose your job, so don't worry about it. What did you want me to do? Sit down, lie down, lose everything over a mandate that was really no longer effect in the US. That's what my country was asking for me. That's what Canadians that were supporting vaccine mandates were asking of me, to lose everything because they were afraid, because our government did a very good job at scaring people making them so afraid that today still some wear face masks. Many of us here are not. And that propaganda hurt our country. And having our prime minister saying that there will be consequences for the va unvaccinated, and we don't want them sitting beside our children on planes and trains and automobiles, and the amount of I'm trying to control my anger over this gentleman, but the wording that he used was division the whole time. Pit one person against another, shame them, make them comply, and if they don't, they will. I'm sorry. I draw the line when my government wants to throw something into my body I cannot remove. That is where I draw the line bodily autonomy, it is mine. It is not my government's. Thank you for answering my questions. We're going to take a break and uh, whether we're going to clear the hall. So I'm going to take a short break, and uh, when I come back, I'll decide if we're going to clear the hall. Five minutes. The commission is in recess for five minutes. La commission Yeah, so Mr. Rolo is pissed off that people applaud, cheer, laugh. Any response in the audience is unacceptable to him. He comes back and he lectures everybody about not having any response. Oh, this is this is a courtroom, but it's not a courtroom. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, he comes back after the break and graciously decides not to clear the room because people have reactions to a powerful woman giving a powerful speech about what was really going on and no one has had that avenue to say it until now. And good on her. She is, she's, she's golden. She's just golden. Ah. Uh, 
she's just I I don't know what to say. She's just golden. She's the most powerful woman that came from the background to actually even start this thing never got even recognized for her contributions in this I don't know people what do you think okay say what you think okay so there was a few spicy meatballs in this day uh, this okay so Wilson is the lawyer for the Freedom Convoy, which is should be on the side of of everybody that's you know, especially this this woman that's was the start of it, Bridget. Uh, I don't know, but somehow. He's not on her side and because, oh, Bridget does actually say some bad things about Tamara. So, anyway, then there's this after the break. Of examination, as we got uh, the documents uh, from this particular witness, uh, several hundred of them, uh, not until this afternoon. I do have concerns from the brief ones I've reviewed and I have given a written objection uh, to your counsel with respect to those. Uh, what I would like to do uh, in the meantime, sir, is I would like your leave and approval to examine this witness following her paralegal examining her. Uh, I can tell you at this point, I don't have many questions for this witness at all. My concern is uh, the beginning of a character assassination as well as attacking my client, uh, the, the corporation itself, and given what was just asked uh, by the Government of Canada and what was just said, I, I would like uh, to sit back and see what the evidence is with respect to the character assassination evidence that I think this witness is intending to give before I do my examination, sir. Okay, well, I'm not sure if we should be talking about character assassinations. Rather, there are some issues being raised. I think let's try and not inflame things and uh, take one step at a time. So you'd like to defer uh, at the moment, uh, and uh, maybe I can hear from. I'm OK with that. Okay. I don't mind if we, if we go first. I think that's what he's saying. That's OK. OK, so that should not be a problem. So let's go through the rest of the roster. And then we can get to that. Okay, so next to the Ottawa residents. <clears throat> In the six or eight blocks of those activities. As did millions of Canadians that demanded people get vaccines and demand that they wear masks and demand that they be thrown to the ground. Yeah, I understood what had happened over the last two years, and I'm sorry they were affected for three weeks, but I suffered for three years. Well, two years. And did you um, associate the people with downtown Ottawa with the government of Canada? Like, did you assume that these were government, federal government workers in some way who, who deserve that disruption? No, that would be ludicrous. And on your arrival in the city, um, we've, we've heard some evidence about a strategy to gridlock the city. Can you tell us about that? I wasn't part of that design. What was, uh, what was the plan, as far as you understood, with the 400 plus uh, semi-tractor trailer trucks converging on downtown? Where did you think they would go? I understood there were two locations we were to, we were to go, but that the police had redirected us once we this is Paul uh, got together at the ARC, we started business, to hear uh, concerns, and I believe the guys were working on it, um, doing whatever they could to, to deal with the logistics issues. I did not deal with the logistics issues in Ottawa. You, you were road captain managing the convoy of trucks from southwestern Ontario to Ottawa, is that right? Yes, and I went where the police directed us, which was nowhere near your residence, by the way. Where, sorry, what does that mean? That means your residence were further, uh, further north. Right. Ours were on the S-Jam. 
there was no residence where we had been. We were in front of the war memorial. Right. I believe that's the war memorial. There is. Uh, you would have seen the apartment buildings there right in front of your trucks? It, no, it was further back. Okay. It was not right directly with a truck. Um, I didn't see protests. You might want to talk to those that caused the issue. That was not me. Uh, so when you went into restaurants and shops, you wore a mask during the uh, convoy protest? Sir, I'm a victim of violence, and I won't put a mask on to make you feel better. So, okay. so when I have to go through what I have to go through and take out a van because you want me to wear a mask, and then you don't want me to drive a car however I live in the country, I take issue to that. I can't walk home. I don't live in a city center like you do. So yes, there are issues on both sides and there is no compassion on this side. That is the issue. You are painting this exactly like the Toronto Star did. You have no empathy for us. So I take that as a no, you didn't wear masks when you went into stores? No, because I'm a shops. female victim of violence and you need to respect that. Okay. And uh, did you observe others that you would go with into stores and shops wearing, uh, not wearing masks, the people you were with? That was asked and answered yes. The answer is yes. And uh, what would, uh, how would people respond when shop owners or staff, sometimes young teenage staff, would say, please wear a mask? What are some of the things you observed in those interactions? I didn't have those interactions. No one ever asked, can you please wear a mask or leave? No, sir. Um, we think you'd be staying. 24 to 48 hours. Uh, and, and you required $10 million to stay 48 hours? Canadians thought our voice needed to be heard and we needed to be supported. So you were planning to leave in 48 hours because you assumed the government was going to agree with your demands? We thought we would get a meeting. Okay, so what changed? Why, didn't you, why did you stay after 48 hours? Because Justin Trudeau did exactly what he's done for the last two years. He literally came out and called us a whole bunch of names. I'm sorry, sir, but if I came and called you a whole bunch of names and said that your ideals and how you felt didn't mean anything to anyone, how would you feel? And that you losing your job, your income, your way to pay your wife's expenses to put food on the table for your children was irrelevant? How would you feel? So because of his actions, there are consequences, and that meant we stayed. So Ms. Belton, then, if I understand your answer correctly, your plan was uh, to come for 48 hours, assuming the Prime Minister would respond to your demands, but if he did not, you were going to stay until he did. Is that right? I didn't say that. So what are you saying? I'm saying we were looking for a meeting. And you were going to stay until you got your meeting? Some sort of response would be good. So you were going to stay until you got your meeting? Or a response. Um, now, uh, you stay if there had in fact been a deal to move the trucks uh, to different locations, you would have supported that kind of a deal? Absolutely. If we could have lessened the events to the citizens, absolutely. We weren't there to disrupt the citizens. We were there to have our government finally hear us after two years. I did my due diligence, sir. I wrote 32 letters. I went the right way, and no one listened to me. So I don't know what you expect of me, but bringing my truck, well, I brought my pickup truck. I didn't bring a, bi a big truck. Did they notice me? Did somebody finally try and come and talk to me? The, the answer to that is still no. So what do I need to do to have my government that is elected to talk to me, to help me solve my problems? You had horn honking. I watched people get thrown to the, th thrown to the ground. I watched children in parks getting thrown off their, uh, off their skateboards by police officers. No one helped those people. Matter of fact, People were supporting this kind of behavior. This is not the behavior of a free country. So in your view, the people of downtown Ottawa were unfortunate casualties. If the Prime Minister had listened to you, what happened to them, those three weeks of sleeplessness and so forth, that wouldn't have happened. It's the Prime Minister's fault? I feel for them. I honestly do. 
but I feel for those truck drivers that were about to not be able to feed their families. Many of those drivers had their whole families in those vehicles with no income. They lose their home. Kids are raised in a truck until school age. We had a one-month-old baby that the city of Ottawa took fuel from, and we had to find accommodation so it didn't freeze to death. Which is more inconvenient? Not having fuel and watch your, your child freeze to death or listening to a few horns? I'm sorry that your clients feel that they are entitled to $460 million for horn honking? Who was going to replace my income if I took a vaccine that killed me so my husband could survive? Not any one of your clients, I guarantee you. But you inflicted that on my clients. And so your that clients you awarded your vaccine guide. mandates. You're well over your time. And Did anybody catch the tax the rich sticker on the back of his laptop? Unbelievable. Oh, this guy mm -hmm. I is think it's a turning piece into of a crap. debate, which I don't think it's constructive. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, next, uh, call on the Ottawa Police Service. Uh, I have no questions, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, the Ontario Provincial anyway, Police. This woman is on fire. She is awesome. You're still on mute. They can't knock this woman down. No way in hell. Can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry about this. Uh, I, I have no questions for the OPP. No questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council for uh, Farmer Chief Slowly. Uh, can't touch this. Pretty sure. Can't touch this. They don't want to. Good evening, Ms. Belton. Rebecca Jones for former uh, Chief Slowly. Just a few questions for you this evening. Um, you testified that you thought the group in Coots had a lot of gumption, right? Oh, Coots. That's not the word I used in my video, but that's the word I can use here. Okay. And I take it that's because they stayed despite police attempts to remove them from the border. No, that was just in blocking a border completely, just doing that act. Um, they were in, all in. They were all in. Right. They maintained their blockade uh, despite attempts to remove them. I'm assuming so. I wasn't there. Okay. Um, I do have to say the horse thing was brilliant. That was just the most beautiful scene I'd ever seen coming across. You also gave evidence that... Afterwards. Yes, okay. But they yeah. said they don't want anything outside after that time frame. Well, it's about... It's information about what happened in Right, but they don't want all the truth out. They only want selected truth out. I know, but he didn't confine us to... I think uh, he did confine I, it. I, again, it's turning into d discussion. Did you recognize that the it, it had been taken over? As soon as we got to Ottawa, there were issues, and they continued and started to magnify. Okay. Um, at, at any point, did you feel that you were specifically... Uh, undermined and targeted? Yeah, uh, it just seemed like uh, I provided the lawyers with a complete list of uh, organizers. Not one of those names uh, showed up on the Freedom Convoy documents for the NFP. Um, my name didn't show up on there. Uh, I understood that the Freedom Convoy Corp uh, dealing with the monies that we had raised as a team, and we were to be a team. Uh, my name didn't show up. I was obviously being admitted. Okay. Uh, who did you, um, who do you regard as the, how do you say, the new leader? Like who was giving direction after you guys were kind of, uh, It whatever. seemed we took a lot of direction from Keith Wilson. Okay. Do you have any evidence for that? 
just in whatever documentation that I've provided. Okay, so can we be specific? Just like I've got, I've got Again, that would be after the EA. I, I've got the titles and then there's uh, There the was a video where he's telling people to come to Ottawa. I do not know what video that is. Okay, and there's, uh, I don't know the number for the, just a sec. That you're trying to give as, as in terms of the the story, uh, and okay. we can leave the documents. They're in. They're in uh, oh. the record, and if yeah. need be, we'll turn them up. But okay, I, I know what it is. It's a uh, an interview uh, with the commission and Keith Williams Wilson. I'm sorry, Keith Wilson. So it's it's Keith Wilson's uh, witness statement. Is that yes. what you're referring yes, to? Yes, with the commission. So uh, the, the document ID for that would be WTS58. Uh, I'm not sure how many zeros. I would note that that's, sorry, WTS60 is 58. Uh, it is a, a interview statement that uh, would require leave. Okay. So is that what you want to refer to? Is that, uh, or is there a need for that? Is there a need for the document? Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, let's is it this one that we're referring to? Yes. Can you indicate the, the three places that we wanted to focus? Uh, okay, if you could turn up the, uh, the witness statement, let's see where we go with this. Uh, yeah, we'd like it brought up, and she's going to identify. What's that? Assistance. This is the kind of thing she needs assistance for. Or do you have it? You have it. Okay. So, uh, which page are you looking uh, at? It starts on page two. And on the second paragraph. Second paragraph, page two? Yeah. Uh, yes. <clears throat> paragraph, which paragraph was it, four? Uh, page two, uh, paragraph two. Okay, this is mostly the stuff okay, that so I added. I oh, out, yes, but, okay. Okay, I'm that, letting this That fly. paragraph, if, do you want me to read it or do you want to read if it? If you wouldn't mind. Right, okay. Uh, Wilson found the TBOF leaders in the Arch Hotel and informed them that the Freedom Convoy organizers would be doing the press conference. Leach told Wilson that she was not in a position to respond to all the questions that may be posed by the press. Wilson agreed to lead the press conference. He decided the event needed to be focused uh, with a clear message. Around this time, Wilson met with Daniel Bulford. Bulford suggested he speak, speak at the press conference about the convoy's work liaisoning with the police regarding safety and emergency vehicle access. Wilson agreed Bulford should also speak at the press conference. So we're, the, the position is that that statement indicates that well, he's taking a leadership role uh, with, with regard to the members of the, of the Freedom Convoy. Okay. That's, Okay, well, I think the wit it's, it should come from the witness, I okay. think. So yeah. uh, what, is, what are you trying to, uh, why are you referring to this comment then? Well, Keith Wilson was writing, uh, writing the speeches and directing what we said. Uh, many times he, he came into a conference room and he goes, let's get the messaging straight. And he said, what are we here for? Mandates, what mandates? All mandates. This was the message that started the convoy. So was he out of touch with what was going on? Did somebody not fill him in? This message was already in place. Okay. So any, anything further? Was, uh, well, there was one document there um, that he distributed to everyone with regard to plain people, persons, Coming in on plane, what's the name of that document? Uh, I believe he says that in this one as well. Um, Oh, he came okay, so. aboard on a flight with us, uh, others that he picked up along the way. 
Okay, what did what did that letter say? It was addressed to to all of the convoy organizers, was it? I'm not sure what you're referring to, but if you're we're still on this document, the one about the planes. No. What what page are you referring to? Oh, okay, uh, we're trying to go so to another I document. Just gonna, I'm I don't know what where the document is. I'm sorry. Okay. Confusion. This that. I'm not sure which else. one we're okay. referring if to. This is why this I is had towards the end a, uh, some help from Rebe Rebecca because 14. everything got jumbled this morning when it was sent back to us. I have no idea where my documents are at this point. And um, I find it extremely unfair that this has happened. Now. If they would have left the uh, the letter that you wrote to the CBSA and their response, right? Um, we don't have it. You can just speak. Okay. This the. CBSA letter came in December, um, and it basically made no accommodations for those that couldn't wear a mask, um, those that, they, they just wouldn't make accommodations. And I had had uh, PIAC there at one point in February of uh, 2021, um, and the woman's name was Jessica, and she had given me exemptions. Um, my company, that I was working for at the time even wrote a letter based on her name on the um, uh, face mask requirements from P uh, from PIAC that they, they give you. She wrote her name, said that if there was any problems, just to refer to her. That never happened. So every time I went through, there was an issue. It depended on what age and I got, whether the issue was a small issue or a massive blown out fight between CBSA and myself. Okay, and uh, you wrote a letter of complaint? My CBSA? husband actually took the initiative uh, because I, I was I was done. I, I didn't plan on staying in, I didn't plan on breathing. I couldn't do it. And, and uh, um, further- I plan to, um, I plan to end my life and give him everything, but um, for some reason I was here to cause a truckus, I guess, and um, I couldn't do it as fast as I would like to. Uh, my husband went ahead and filed the um, filed the complaint first on my behalf. Uh, CBSA wouldn't allow it. I told them that I was afraid of repercussion at the border, that this would continue to strain the relationship between myself and CBSA. Um, and after their letter uh, of basically not providing accommodation, uh, following the rules of Ontario, which were if you, did, you didn't have to be uh, masked if you actually had a valid medical reason, I think going back to a terrible time in your life is a valid medical reason. Um, and uh, they minimized the suffering and the experience with them at CBSA. And I, I wrote them back and I said, please don't es underestimate what you've done. I had at that point uh, started on a downward spiral of rapid weight loss. Um, my southbound trips were fine, but my northbound trips were um, unable to sleep, tossing and turning, not eating, losing rapid weight, shaking. Uh, driving up to CBSA, it, it, at first it was just a little bit, then it became more and more strenuous, more more stressful, and it just started compiling, it, shaking, driving from Texas to to on, Ontario, and actually being so overwrought on the second day that I had to take a day and I couldn't move, I couldn't get out of bed, I had to take a day. Uh, kind of get my stuff together and continue on. So it was a very traumatic experience, although CBSA thinks they were just doing their job. So after you got the response back from CBSA, uh, you wrote um, to various uh, MPs and other officials. Do you, can you uh, state the names of those individuals and roughly what you were asking them for or to do? I was asking for help, help. I wanted help. I wanted someone to help me. Um, 
some of those messages, I believe, start with 911, help, I need help. Randy Hillier, uh, Roman Babber, um, Leanne Rood, uh, maybe even Monty, Monty McNaughton. I know there were letters to him. I went federal, I went provincial. Nobody listened. Nobody helped. What was I don't want to listen to your staff member when I'm having an issue that is life changing. I want to talk to you. I want to sit down with you, whether it's with a Tim Hortons coffee or a bottle of water, and let's figure out the problem and find some solutions. But those weren't available. How many of those uh, emails did you send? Approximately 32. Okay. So I just have one last uh, statement. Uh, you indicated to me that uh, your grandfather had given you an explanation of the conditions under totalitarianism or communism. Uh, you, you recounted that to me. Can you recount it here? Uh, yeah, it was uh, November 11th. I was 14 and I was visiting and um, being a teenager with attitude, I sat while the, while the services started in the minute of silence. My grandfather grabbed me by the back of the shirt, by the back of the collar, lifted me up and he said, you'll stand here and you'll respect our dad. Afterwards, um, after the time had passed on the, on the television, I remember we were watching it on the television, um, I went to sit back down <clears throat> and he made me stand for a full minute. After the, when we were done, I was ordered to go to the kitchen table. I sat with him while he explained to me what it was like to be in Nazi Germany. He told me about the snitch lines, that if you wanted your neighbor's piano and they weren't gonna give it to you, you just called up the Nazi snitch lines and they would take care of the family and you would go and get their, their belongings. They talk, he talked to me about children who would go to school and the teachers would ask, what did your parents talk about last night? And they would come home and find their families murdered because they said bad things about Hitler. The warning signs were here. We had people snitching on people at Christmas time, enjoying family members because there were made have been six people in a, in a home that that person doesn't own. And then we watched Quebec police officers pull people out of those homes, throw them to the ground and arrest them because they were spending time with their family. We were headed down the road that my grandfather talked to, uh, talked to me about. I don't wanna live that way. I wanna live the way we have been in Canada. I want us to be united again. I want us to look at people and smile as we don't walk down the street. That works everywhere but the GTA. Um, I mean, I want us to get back to where we were in 2019. That's all I want. It's not that much to ask for. We're not that far away. And we need to stop yelling at people and dividing every, uh, and pitting each other against each other. We have a prime minister that was a former drama teacher and all he has done is has made Canada full of drama. He's very good at what he does. Okay, so that was uh, the last question. Just Thank you. Oh, maintain our freedom. I'm Providing. not sure that's, that's relevant to what we're doing here, but I'll let it go. go uh, uh, but please, we've heard your message, I think. Yes, I, get, I understand. Uh, Providing it's uh, allowed to be addressed in courts, I do believe that it's still valid and still exists. Okay. That's it. Thank you. No questions, sir, for the uh, Freedom Corp. Okay. I, I have just one little trying to understand my notes, so it, it shouldn't be long. But Rolo would you talked about ADT Canada to, uh, asking Bill of Rights. You are question. contacting you about Windsor, and I just, I, my note is ADT clear. Canada was a company. I just got the ADT phone number. I know Ben was one of the heads, uh, had owned the company, 
but the number came from the company number, so I, I can't recall who I was talking to at that time. It very may well have been Ben, but I, I'm not sure. And, and what did they ask you? If, if the Windsor border should be blocked, and absolutely not, I said. And I thought there was something, and I have a note about slow roll. Yeah, continue to slow roll, which is what the whole convoy was originally built on was that we would slow roll mm -hmm. in a convoy together across Canada. Okay, so this call was from ADT Canada, someone, and it had to do with the Ambassador Bridge, was it? Or was it the Blue Water? It was Ambassador. It was Ambassador. And you said slow roll. So would this have been before the Ottawa, uh, the, the 28th, or just trying to get the data? No, the no, this would have been before the Windsor blockade happened. I was asked, should it happen? And I said, no. You said slow roll. Slow roll, okay. as had, had we been. What happened was a lot of the convoy came to Ottawa, but in each region, there were people that couldn't make that trip. So they continued supporting us in their region. Okay. And uh, I'm just trying to understand also uh, about your pickup truck in Ottawa. You said you turned around when you got here and went, uh, and uh, because you had a pickup truck, you could turn around and go to Arnprior, I think it was? I, yeah, I did go. I went to Ottawa West first uh, to a family member and then I went up to Arm Prior. I actually have a video on my TikTok where I'm, I'm telling Chris to hurry up uh, because I haven't got to meet him yet. Um, him and Tamara, I think, I, I'm saying, hurry up, guys. Um, but in all fairness, they didn't know I was going there to meet them. So um, I, did, I do have a TikTok edit on that day. You have to be fair. I have to be fair. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't bust them up okay. for not being being So then there you me. picked up that convoy and went into Ottawa and you described that and so on. Did you then stay there? That's what I'm trying to get at. No, I wasn't there for quite a few days. I actually came in and out of the city. Um, and as long as you know how to sneak through the city, there was no issue. I got in, um, I believe it was on or about the Wednesday before I was offered a room. Um, and I, I was told by Tom Morazzo that I should um, should get a room there because I needed to be more accessible instead of coming in and working late, going home, to, well, going home, going to my family's home and uh, coming back in the morning, so. Okay, and just to, to close up on this, and when you would come back, where would your pickup truck go? Would it become part of the convoy again? Either oh, no, or... sir, I paid for parking. Okay. And when I, I have those parking t uh, passes, if you'd like to see them, and I also have the um, uh, little pass from the ARC where I parked my, my vehicle. I never parked on the street. Okay, He's so that's what I was trying to pin. understand. No, I'm respectful. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm just trying to get the information. I'm, yeah. uh, He's trying to okay, pin so her that, uh, ends, into some uh, kind of I think for the day, activity uh, that she and, wasn't uh, involved in. Uh, it's a long day today. Oh, and it was the a good long news day today. It's been a long, long day, day tomorrow. every so, day. Um, 9.30, It's going to be a long day every day. The commission is adjourned. La commission est adjournée. Okay, this went longer than I thought it would. I wanted to condense, uh, well, we condensed about 10 hours worth of stuff into one hour. So there's that. Um, I was working on a couple other projects. Uh, the, the, the Brenda Lucky and Bill Blair episode and I was looking into the Nova Scotia thing, uh, actually. So if if anybody's interested in the Nova Scotia uh, <clears throat> hearing that is similar to this inquiry that we're doing now, uh, but they're further along, um, let me know. And uh, I'll dig a little deeper into that because there's some really funky stuff going on with that. Uh, and, and the same characters. 
Brendan Lackey and Bill Blair are both deeply involved in that. Um, well, they're connected with that, and then and there's controversy over what was discussed and what wasn't, and whether there was influence. And those, both of those two, are supposed to uh, be involved in this EMA. Uh, they're calling for Bill Blair to resign and Lucky should be fired and I don't disagree with either of those things. So, uh, you know, do, is anybody interested in, in delving further into the Nova Scotia thing and maybe having some summaries of that because they've got a lot of stuff online and uh, a lot of reports have already been made and uh, their final report was supposed to be made by now uh, November 2nd uh, but they've been extended now until I believe May uh, end of May uh, there could, because these other recordings came up and I guess they have to review that and put that into the analysis uh, yeah you know oh, our government officials they're just so corrupt recordings need to be made of all of their interactions so, yeah, th th this was somehow not quite kosher that this recording was made and uh, it was made and the guy that made it claimed, oh, I lost my phone and no, I really didn't actually make that recording. Oh, God, Jesus, they're just, they're all so corrupt. But anyway, okay. And ending for now, uh, what do you think about uh, our, our, our clandestine major person uh, that was involved in the, in the, in the, in the convoy that nobody really knew about? And uh, she's a powerful woman. Anyway, okay. Let me know what you think. Comments are good. Likes and sub subscribes are be great. Okay. Ciao for now.